Hello viewers. This video is the second part of the derivative chapter. Now in this video, I will be explaining the mechanism of action of the remaining derivative which I could not complete it in my previous video. In my previous derivative video, I did explain the various part of my front the site and the target of the different diuretics, the classification of diuretics, and the mechanism of action of the loop or the high cooling diuretic. This video will include all other parts other than the loop diuretic. So to start with, the thiazide is the next group which comes under the medium efficacy derivative. It is also a sulfonamide derivative and it is filtered at the glomerulus and they are subjected to tubular transportation or tubular secretion. So the site of action of thiazide diuretic is the early part of the digital disease. Early is the disease is the site where this group of blood acts. And the target is the sodium chloride transport. Sodium chloride transport is present in the early part of the distributive group, which is inhibited by thiazide group of drugs. Now, on inhibiting the sodium chloride transport, there is decreased reabsorption of sodium and chloride. So, more of excretion of sodium and chloride happens through linear fluid. Now, with this, we have the hypokalemia as the adverse effect. There is, there is more of potassium excretion and magnesium excretion, causing hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia. Now, the reason for hypokalemia is similar as that of pyrithromide. Increased sodium load at the distal tissues, at the, at the, sorry, at the collecting duct, causing more of exchange of sodium with potassium causing more of sodium reabsorption and potassium excretion secretion in the collecting duct causing the hypokalemia. Now the effect from uric acid excretion is same as that of erythromide. There is decreased uric acid excretion causing hyperuricemia and it may precipitate the gout. Now again the reason is similar to that of pyrithromide because of the competition with the because of the competition with the diuretic there is more of secretion of diuretic and not the uric acid causing hyperuricemia and also a reabsorption of uric acid is increased. Now the effect on calcium is is opposed to that of the effect of pyrithromide. Here there is decreased excretion of calcium. Here there is decreased excretion of calcium causing hypercalcemia. In pyrithromide there is hypocalcemia. We will see the reason in the subsequent slide. So as we know that the thiazide diuretic acts on the distal part, distal tissue, the early part of the distal conjugated tissue. So we have the basolateral membrane and the luminal membrane. There is presence of sodium chloride import at the luminal membrane and there is sodium potassium acetate at the basolateral membrane. So here in general there is reabsorption of sodium and chloride through this input mechanism and then the sodium is reabsorbed in the blood in exchange with the potassium. Now, thiazide group of drugs inhibit its import mechanism, import transporter, and causing more of sodium and chloride in the luminal layer, urine to be excreted out. Now, because of the increased sodium in the luminal urine, there is decreased sodium over here in the cellular compartment. So this leads to more of exchange of sodium from blood goes inside of the cell and the calcium comes to the blood causing hypercalcemia. 
But another reason is because of the direct transportation of calcium from luminal urine to the blood compartment again causing hypercalcemia. The next move is the carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. So we have a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor like acetazolamide, torzolamide, cinzolamide. The site of action is the proximal tubule, mainly the proximal tubule, where there is presence of carbonic anhydrase in the brain. It is also a sulfonamide derivative, and the target of action is the enzyme known as carbonic anhydrase. So, let's see the mechanism of action of carbonic anhydrase. After this text, I will be showing the figure for the mechanism of action of carbonic anhydrase. So there is a reduced hydration of carbon dioxide because of which there is decreased bioavailability of H plus ion, hydrogen ion, for exchange with that of sodium. And also because of this rust water carbonic anhydrase inhibition, there is a decreased dehydration also of the bicarbonate with carbonic acid, carbonic acid base which causes lesser diffusion of CO2 because of lesser formation of CO2 and that's why there is inhibition of sodium and bicarbonate reabsorption causing more of excretion of diesel. So we will see by the help of a figure. So here we have a cellular compartment of proximal concentrated tissue, and there we have this exchanger, the sodium and hydrogen exchanger, sodium and hydrogen exchanger at the luminal period, whereas the sodium and potassium exchange is there in the uh, circulatory membrane. Uh, in general, what happens is that sodium is reabsorbed in action with that of hydrogen ion. Now this hydrogen ion is complex with HCO3 minus and forms HCO3, carbon HCO3. Now this HCO3 in presence of this carbonic anhydrase forms the CO2 and HCO. CO2 and HCO. There is dehydration. Now this carbon dioxide diffuses passively inside and then again in presence of carbonic anhydrase enzyme there is hydration leading to formation of H plus and HCO3 minus. Now this HCO3 minus is a reactor and then H plus ion is exchanged with that of sodium causing more of sodium reaction. Now, when we give a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor like extrazolamide, it will inhibit this carbonic anhydrase, leading to inhibition of this step and this step. And because of inhibition of both this step, there will be lesser formation of CO2, so lesser diffusion, and so lesser H plus ion formation, and lesser reaction with that of sodium, and then more of luminal sodium will be there it will be excreted out. So this is the mechanism of action of carbonic anhydrase. The next group is the potassium sparing directive in which we have the two group of drugs. So the first is aldosterone antagonist and the second is the directly acting agent. The first is aldosterone antagonist, the example is pyranolactone. It is related with the Aldosterone. The site of action is a late crystal tissue and the collaborator. The target is the mineral corticoid receptor. And it acts from the interstitial side of the tumor. So, with this figure, we will try to understand the mechanism of action of both the groups that is, the aldosterone antagonist and the directly acting agent. Normally, we have the aldosterone which gets inside the cell and binds with the mineralocorticoid receptor, a mineralocorticoid receptor. 
and forms a complex known as mineral body by detector electron complex. Now this complex goes in high energy yes, and 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 there is diamerization happens and then there is the binding of this with a specific gene of the DNA causing to form a specific mRNA that leads to formation of the protein known as electron in this protein. Now this electron in this protein is responsible for activation of the sodium channel which is present at the luminal membrane and also the activation of sodium calcium particulate at the activation membrane. Also, it helps in the translocation of the sodium channel from inside to the membrane. Also, the translocation of sodium calcium particulate from inside to the membrane so that more of the reabsorption can happen. So, when we see this paranormal electron as electron antagonist, it goes and binds competitively with the set of mineral corticoid receptors. Now, because of this, electron cannot bind and the whole the chain of reaction will not happen, causing the lesser of activation of this template and the ultimate translocation of uh, sodium channel and sodium potassium ATPs is decreased. So lesser absorption and more of activation of sodium in the linear media. So this was the mechanical action of this file platform. About the directly active medium, we have amylarized which directly act and inhibit the sodium channel acid membrane by inhibiting the average reabsorption. Next one we have the osmotic diuretic like mannitol. It is filtered freely at the glomerulus and after the filtration it is not reabsorbed. It is pharmacologically inert and will have no other effect. The site of action is proximal and descending limb, which is freely possible. Now, the mechanism is it raises osmolarity. The mechanism of action is based on the osmotic activity of this group of cells. So, it raises osmolarity of plasma and tubular fluid. It expands extra cellular fluid volume, and because, because of this, there will be increased VFR rate and there will be decreased renin release, which, which helps in the Lesser in retention of sodium and potassium because of lesser formation of interleukin 2. And then there is increased regional blood flow to medulla because the decreased medullary hypertensity and decreases passive salt release. Also, it retains water also automatically, you will see it in the subsequent slide, in the proximal tissue and it diverts to liminal fluid which opposes the sodium chloride release. Also, it opposes the Antibiotic hormone in the therapeutic cell. So, this is the figure showing the mechanism of action of osmotic diabetes. So, manitol is an example, it is given, then it will, it will pass from the blood to the lumen, and because it increases the osmotic pressure over here, so it will cause the drainage of H2O water from blood to the lumen. From lower concentration to higher concentration so because of osmotic activity, this is transportation after so, and that is known as osmosis and that causes increased fluid over here and then more of fluid will be excreted out. Because of more of fluid inside here, there will be more of flow and because of more flow, there will be lesser contact time so that the sodium is reabsorbed and hence the sodium is also not really absorbed properly and gets excreted out along with water. So, by this osmotic activity, manitol or the osmotic diuretic increases the urine excretion. So, this was the mechanism of action of all the group of diuretics. Thank you and follow me.